I hate cancer, hate it. I was diagnosed in 2017 and immediately was told it was stage four. I had a rectal tumor and I had spots in my lungs. And stage four at that time for that particular cancer had a 15% survival past five years. And those odds aren't that great. 15% past five years. I'm a mom, I have five kids, wonderful husband here. One of my children is here tonight. All of my kids are adopted. And the worst thing I could imagine was my children losing another mother. I couldn't even bear the thought. And I have been told, stay away from the internet. Don't go there, you know, just don't even go. It's not gonna tell you who you are. And that's absolutely the truth. If you're diagnosed with cancer or someone that you love is diagnosed with cancer, you're gonna to go to the internet and you're gonna see statistics and you are not a statistic. Your loved one is not a statistic. So where do you go? Where do you go for information? And you can go to the American Cancer Society, cancer.org. That's the place where you can rely on the information cancer.org. Give that information to anyone you know who's battling cancer. Tell them now that's the place to go. Because all the other stuff on the internet is noise. It's noise. And you are not a statistic. You know, 15% survival past five years. I was terrified. Absolutely terrified. And I remember calling um, a dear friend of mine. You might know her and I'm going to name her and give her credit where credit is due. Virginia Marsh, she's a local attorney, she's wonderful, and she's one of my mentors in life. And I called her because I was just terrified and devastated and didn't know what to do and, you know, was just distraught. And she sat me down and she said, Lisa, somebody is in that 15%. Why not you? Why not you? You can be in that 15%. It can be you, somebody's in there, why not you? So I started the fight, I started the battle, I just, you know, pulled up my bootstraps and I just jumped in and started the fight. And I did, I got really, really sick from the chemo, could not receive that chemo again because I didn't have the enzymes to process it, ended up in the hospital for 10 days. Mary came and visited me, she knows what I looked like at that time. and. I did 35 radiation sessions. And at the end of all that, this was it started out in July. And ironically, like 30 days after I was diagnosed, Mary was diagnosed. So we kind of went through a similar battle, you know, kind of bouncing off of each other in the middle of the night, texting each other, how you doing? And it, it gave me some a sense of camaraderie to have somebody going through that journey with me, but it was horribly difficult to know that somebody I loved was suffering through exactly what I was going through. You don't want to see that. You don't want to share that. You don't want anyone you love to go through what you're going through. So anyway, um, we, we had companionship in our pain, but we did, I did the, the treatment and then they did, okay, well, we're going to go and biopsy that lung and find out what's going on because it was still showing up after all this treatment. And it was, I was praying, oh, you know, maybe it's nothing. I'll pray for it to be anything but this really, really aggressive cancer. And it turned out I got exactly what I was praying for. It was a second primary cancer. So I had two cancers that showed up at the same time in my body. And they had assumed that it was stage four of the first cancer, but it was not. So then we did the... the thoracic surgeon that took the lung tumors out said, oh, well, this is a very slow growing cancer and it may never return. And the first line of defense is removal and we've done it. We've taken it out. So it may never come back. You're probably going to die of something else before it ever comes back. So I was a little bit relieved. I was like, okay. And my oncologist said, well, you're cancer free right now. The tumor, the original tumor's gone, the lung spots are gone, you're cancer free. And I was like, Phew. wasn't stage four, 
and a second cancer that wasn't aggressive, yay. So I'm like fat, dumb, and happy for a few months, and I'm like walking on the beach, doing my little beachy, getting my strength back, getting all happy. I took up uh, some crafty things because I just had to motivate myself to get up because I was really, really tired. And September of 2018, my CT and PET scan came back and there was a spot in my liver. And nobody wants a spot in their liver. So then they're like, well, okay, you were diagnosed with two cancers, so now we gotta figure out which one it is. So I had to do a liver biopsy. And then it, I was like, oh, please let it be the less aggressive cancer. Let it be the one that isn't as deadly. And it wasn't. It was the worst news ever. It, I was now officially stage four, squarely in the 15% survival past five years category. And once again, right back in the battle. So I met with my oncologist and he said, you know, we can't give you that chemo that almost killed you. And I'm like, well, thank you. I don't want that chemo. And he said, I've got, you know, I'm going to bounce this idea off because, you know, that was the common treatment. He said, I'm going to bounce this idea off some friends of mine and I'm going to see what I can do and what we're, we're going to come up with a plan. But first, we have to check out the spots in your left lung. And I'm like, really? So we did the whole another lung biopsy and found out that that was inflammation. So that was one little bright speck of happiness there. It wasn't any cancer in the left lung. I was good. So we started treatment and he gave me um, carboplatin and taxol. And they're both very aggressive. Lost all my hair. They caused peripheral neuropathy. I iced my hands and feet for every single session so that I wouldn't get neuropathy. And I went through six sessions of that and they couldn't find that liver spot on a CT or PET scan. It was supposedly just deader than a doornail. And I went to my radiation oncologist who was then supposed to zap it. And she said, well, I can't zap something I can't see. So she sent me to a liver surgeon and the liver surgeon said, oh, and at that time I had re-looked at the American Cancer Society who directed me to the links for this specific cancer because that's what I trusted. That's where I went. You don't, don't, don't do the other stuff. Just go to cancer.org. Follow those links. They're trusted sites. And the survival rate in a year and a half had jumped to 34% past five years for stage four of this cancer. Now, I don't know about you, but that doubled my odds, and I, more than doubled my odds, and I was just totally excited. And I have to believe that part of that was due to the research and the, the trials and the, just all of the energy that goes into trying different drugs on different patients and testing and seeing if there's mutations that the American Cancer Society funds. So I, I was given some grace there and I was very excited about that. And this liver surgeon said, I can give you a 70% cure rate. And I went, what? He said, well, you only have one spot in your liver. Usually I see people with way more than that. And I think it's dead, but we're going to go in and we're going to get it. And I can put a sonogram on your entire liver and look for any other spots and get them while I'm in there. And I said, how do you know there's not like one stray cancer cell floating around in my body? And he said, Lisa, the highest concentration of cancer cells were in that liver spot and it's dead and I'm gonna remove the dead liver tumor. So I can give you a 70% chance of a cure. And I couldn't really believe him. 70% cure rate jumped from 34% survival past five years yeah you know, how can that be how can that be it just boggled my mind i couldn't even really start to hope for that for a couple of weeks after he told me that and i did go through the surgery which was literally standing room only because when they rented the sonogram equipment it came with technicians there was my surgeon was in there and his fellow was in there and all the nurse people and then they stood me up 
I was asleep, I don't remember, but they stood me up because gravity would pull my liver down because I had to go over the top of my liver. Is it crazy? Standing room only, that's the joke. Liver surgeon called Joe in the middle of it and said, I can't cut the spot out because it's behind her liver and I can't reach it. And if I go in blind, I'm gonna have to open her up all the way. And can I ablate it? Which means liquefy it with microwaves. He said, can I ablate it? And Joe said, well, yeah. And he goes, well, good, because I'm probably gonna have to do that anyway. And I want her to be mad at you and not me. <laughs> so Joe was like, okay. Anyway, they, that's what he did. He ablated the spot, he scanned my liver. And that surgery was, it'll be three years ago in May. So I'm almost three years cancer free. Been, it was two and a half years in June. So I'm almost at the three year mark. And I really, I really can't say enough about the support that I got from the American Cancer Society, from this community, from the Marys, from everyone I've met through Relay through the years. And just one little, one little kernel of, of truth from my story is that Plaxitaxel, which is the shortened name for that is Taxol, one of the drugs that they gave me, because they couldn't give me the other one that almost killed me, was, is commonly used in other countries to treat this particular cancer. And it was not commonly treated in the United, or used in the United States at that point in time. But since I couldn't receive the other one, they did all this research and they found this and um, they were able to give me that particular drug. Plaxitaxel is derived, the original drug, I think it's synthetically made now, but the original drug was derived from the bark of the European yew tree. Now, who would know that? Who would figure that out except for the research that gets funded by things like the American Cancer Society? Who would figure out that the bark of the European yew tree could save my life? And it did. I'm still here. My kids still have a mom. And that kind of research is, is what you're funding and what you're supporting when you support Relay for Life, who provides the funding to the American Cancer Society. So. I, the, the cure for cancer, this is my personal belief, the cure for cancer is out there. It's there. We just have to find it. And it's the funding that we raise at events like this that help the research. I mean, we heard this afternoon some of the researchers talking about the, the lung cancer. And, you know, that's the kind of research that was probably done on the bark of the European yew tree, and it saved my life. So what I want to leave you with is you're not a statistic. Your loved one was not a statistic. And somebody is in those groups of survival. Somebody's in those. When you look at if you have to go there, because I, I didn't go there for a long time. It was months before I really could even really process it. But if you have to go there and you have to look at those numbers, one, say to yourself, hey, some of these people that didn't survive past five years got hit by trains or buses or had a heart attack or they don't look at it and say they died from this. So it's like how many are, are still alive after five years you're not a statistic. You're strong. You can do it. You can fight. And why not you? Why not you? There is no reason, no reason. And my oncologist, I ended up, that's the other thing I want to tell people is you are empowered. You are the patient. You need to put a team behind you that um, believes that you can do it. I fired my first oncologist because he told me, hey, this is incurable. And I found an oncologist that said, why not you? You know, you're young, you're healthy, you have nothing else seriously wrong. Why can't you? I will work as hard to put you in that 15% as you will. So, you know, we fought together. It was a team that worked. So don't be afraid to fire somebody if they don't believe that you can fight, because you can, and why not you? And that's my message.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.